Well, actually, there has been a lot of uh, uh, discussion and of debates around uh, um, the uh, impact that uh, post-operative radiotherapy could have in patients with uh, some kind of locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer, but who have surgery. This is uh, stage 3A and 2 patients, so they are the most advanced patients that can be operated. And these patients actually, for the past 10 years, uh, the standard of care is a surgery uh, with adjuvant chemotherapy or with neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And as they still have a, a mediastinal relapse rate of about uh, 20 to 40 percent, according to the study, uh, there was always discussion about eventually um, adding postoperative uh, radiotherapy. The thing is that there had been some randomized evidence, but more, uh, this is a publication of 1998 from The Lancet, which said uh, that for less advanced uh, uh, cancer, it should not be done. And for PN2, that is the, 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 the population of uh, lung art, and the question remained open. This is based on the randomized evidence. So radio radiotherapy needed to be evaluated again. Uh, but there have been a lot of retrospective study, large database study coming from the US saying that a post-operative radiotherapy could improve outcome. So that really it was a debate in every um, centers. Uh, so uh, there were people who were always doing it, uh, or, uh, other people not doing it. So it was quite important uh, to establish really a standard of care for these patients that we see uh, every uh, week uh, at our multidisciplinary boards. So actually the, the, the main end point of this study was to the um, disease-free uh, survival at three years. Uh, and so we needed uh, 500 uh, patients to um, evaluate that. And our statistical hypothesis was that uh, uh, we would be, we would have to increase and improve this disease-free survival uh, by 12%, uh, going from 30% at 42% uh, uh, with 500 patients if you wanted uh, to say that uh, post-operative radiotherapy uh, did uh, really improve uh, DFS in a, a significant way. So actually the eligibility criteria were patients who had stage 3A and 2 that had complete surgery according to uh, the guidelines of the European uh, thoracic surgery, according to the international uh, guidelines of complete resection, and they uh, could have radiotherapy, uh, chemotherapy, sorry, either neoadjuvant or uh, adjuvant, and some patients even didn't have any chemotherapy who wanted really broad uh, inclusion uh, criteria so that uh, it met all, all the needs of uh, uh, patients in everyday practice as long, and this is important, as, uh, as long as they had N2 nodal involvement that was proven, cytologically or, patho or pathologically, and uh, if they had complete resection, because, um, or else it was another question. We wanted really to evaluate adjuvant, the role of adjuvant uh, post-operative radiotherapy. Okay, so actually uh, we were a bit surprised by um, the results uh, because uh, um, the disease-free uh, survival at three years was 
good, very good in both uh, arms. It was uh, about 44% in the uh, control group, uh, and it was 47% in the port group. So that we had a 15% uh, improvement in terms of DFS, but of course this difference uh, was not significant and the other ratio was 0 0.85 and the p-value was 0 0.16. If we look at the disease-free components in terms of first event, actually we see that there is um, the, the, the rate of uh, mediastinal relapses in the port group is divided by two as compared to the uh, uh, the control group. Uh, so there is an effect, uh, but as there are many patients relapsing also um, uh, uh, elsewhere and uh, well, uh, a significant number also of patients who had brain metastasis, that was not enough uh, to uh, improve uh, disease-free survival. The other um, important uh, information that we got is that the, uh, the overall survival uh, was uh, very good compared to previous um, adjuvant uh, uh, trials in the sense that uh, in these uh, high-risk population, and the, the OS is uh, 66, uh, uh, over 66%, 66 and 68. And so more than two-thirds of our patients are living at three years. This is uh, very good. Um, but when we look at the causes of death, uh, um, comparatively in the two, uh, uh, the two arms, we see that there are less deaths due to recurrence or progression in the port arm, but there are more deaths uh, due to cardiopulmonary causes in uh, the uh, port arm. So that there is this safety issue, uh, uh, and indeed, we, um, we had more deaths, more cardiopulmonary deaths. Uh, they're not really related uh, to radiotherapy. Uh, uh, some of them probably, but not all of them. Uh, but uh, uh, it's true that adding this treatment to this population that is already at risk of uh, cardiopulmonary events, uh, uh, is maybe the treatment that is too much. Uh, um, so that based on these uh, first analysis, because there will be many more to come, based on this first analysis, uh, we uh, said clearly that their uh, post-operative radiotherapy uh, should not be uh, now considered as a standard of care uh, in patients with stage three non-small cell lung cancer uh, who have had a complete resection. And the term complete resection is important because if they have an incomplete resection, there it's another story and indeed port can improve survival. But for patients who have a complete resection, so good surgery, um, it should not be administered based on the data that we um, gave yesterday um, at ESMO 2020. There will be a further study because we accumulated, uh, thanks to all the co-investigators, co I want to acknowledge all of them. Uh, uh, mostly, it was mostly um, patients from the French intergroup, uh, um, uh, French intergroup, EFCT, but also the UK and, and CRI group, uh, uh, and uh, from the SAC and some uh, German and Belgium center. Um, and uh, there will be a lot of data regarding the uh, surgery, regarding the pathology, regarding the quality of radiotherapy, uh, um, but uh, so that maybe we will be able to identify a subgroup of patients uh, which could 
benefit more from uh, radiotherapy in terms of control of the disease and uh, uh, with as less uh, um, as little harm uh, as possible with uh, fewer complications i um, i do not think personally that uh, um, an improvement even bigger of uh, um, conformal radiotherapy with IMRT, for instance, would make a difference. I, I believe that it's more the fact that we're accumulating treatments in this rather fragile population at high risk of recurrence. Um, and that this uh, way, this trial is an important trial also because it, it's a de-escalation in the treatment of these patients. And we have to concentrate more uh, probably on the uh, systemic uh, treatment, uh, adjuvant treatment. And uh, of course, there are a lot of ongoing studies. Um, radiotherapy is very, very important for these patients, but perhaps uh, it's combined with chemo, combined with immuno, like for instance, the Pacific, uh, that gave excellent results for more advanced population. Uh, lung heart is not, uh, is a population that has been operated. Uh, Pacific was patients that were, could not be operated, so they're even more advanced. Huh? So uh, radiotherapy is a very valuable uh, treatment with a lot of efficacy, uh, but probably uh, these patients, when they have complete surgery, uh, uh, one local treatment, if it's well done, is enough.